on the crypto side, address a question that we've been getting uh, quite frequently. You can tell how convinced we are that deflation is the higher probability. And we know that's way out of consensus, and that's where we like to be. But uh, many wonder how we could be positive at all about Bitcoin if we're not worried about inflation. This bull market has strengthened. Uh, it has um, deflected all kinds of bad news. The doubling in interest rates in the first quarter, the Archegos leverage uh, blow up in the ecosystem, which many thought could cause systemic problems. Uh, we've uh, been through tax hike uh, discussions, which sounded pretty uh, onerous in terms of uh, their impact on capital. Uh, and, uh, and we've seen a big correction. Uh, we certainly uh, were right in the middle of it uh, in valuations as those interest rates went up. Well, I think 08, 09 is a very good reason why. Why did 08, 09 almost melt the financial world down? It did so because of counterparty risk. And uh, what we've just seen in the crypto market is really interesting. It's been cut in half, two trillion to one trillion, the ecosystem, the entire, in the last few months, just cut in half. Can you imagine what would happen if our asset pr equity prices, bond prices were cut in half in the span of a few months with all the leverage out there? I think we'd be in a counterparty risk problem again, a, a big mess, maybe not as big of a mess as we were in 08, 09, because there have been some changes. Uh, but I, I do not believe that our financial world would withstand a 50% drop as easily as the DeFi world has. Uh, DeFi, the, while a lot of people who were lev leveraged 100 times uh, elsewhere in the world uh, were wiped out. I think, now I'm going to get this number wrong, it was either 86,000 or 860,000 accounts wiped out. Uh, DeFi didn't skip a beat. I don't think we could say that for uh, the traditional financial world. And I do think that's why we're the shift towards DeFi, helped now by central banks uh, moving into stable coins and legitimizing uh, digital digital currencies, even though that's very different from a Bitcoin, I do think we're going to accelerate further and faster into the DeFi world. And that too is very exciting. And as you know, if Bitcoin's price on a trend basis, remember, we're still a triple since last September. Uh, we may have been cut in half, but we were still a triple since last. And if the price continues to move up, what does that mean? That means increased purchasing power, which is what deflation is. Uh, so very consistent with our view of the world. Uh, and now on to the markets. Uh, as we've started, as we've said all year long, this bull market has strengthened. Uh, it has um, deflected all kinds of bad news. Uh, uh, the, the doubling in interest rates in the first quarter, the Archegos leverage, uh, uh, blow up in the ecosystem, which many thought could cause systemic problems. We've uh, been through tax hike uh, discussions, which sounded pretty uh, onerous in terms of uh, their impact on capital. And, uh, and we've seen a big correction. Uh, we certainly uh, were right in the middle of it uh, in valuations as those interest rates went up in the higher valuation uh, side of the market, particularly if one is looking at valuations as of this year uh, on, on this year's earnings. So we're, we're very happy at the way the market has performed. It's up double digits. Uh, and uh, we've seen now a shift, a rotation back from value as some of these prices have started to unwind, the commodity prices in particular, towards growth. But I think we're going to see toggling back and forth until some of the confusion that I'm discussing here dissipates. Uh, it's going to be so important to get on the right side of change. So, you know, part of our mission and value is to educate. We know robots are coming to satisfy 
uh, or to take care of wage inflation uh, problems. Uh, today in our brainstorm, we were talk uh, talking about robot uh, picking uh, strawberries um, and big debate about that. Are we ready for it? Are we ready for it? Uh, and uh, I think we, we believe we're ready for it. On the oil price side, you know, the antidote to that, electric vehicles at an accelerated rate, almost a self-fulfilling prophecy if the oil price keeps going up. Uh, and uh, just a, a little note for Tesla fans here. Um, it was interesting to see in their sales, which I think were up 84% year over year, certainly taking share from uh, the old world. Uh, if you looked at their press release, there was a very interesting picture. Uh, it was their semi-truck. Now, this press release had nothing to do with, uh, with semi-trucks, and certainly not electric semi-trucks. Uh, and yet there it was. No explanation, just that's, that, that there it was. Uh, and I do think it's because of some of the, um, the, the too simple and the plus and the Aurora deals uh, that are coming out. And Tesla's uh, basically there just um, reminding everybody that you know these companies think they have an autonomous uh, uh, truck uh, business, uh, just you wait. And uh, sort of, I was happy to see that actually. In order to maximize uh, the sharp ratio, an institution might uh, move towards, in crypto assets, we did it on Bitcoin, 6% of a portfolio in, in Bitcoin in order to minimize volatility uh, and enjoy the increased return uh, associated with crypto. Uh, that percent might be more like 2.5%. And it reminds me of the emerging markets in the, two th in the, in the 1980s. MSCI came along and said, hey, wait a minute. Uh, these countries, they're all emerging markets very early on, uh, but they each have idiosyncratic risks. Why don't we put them all together in a portfolio? And uh, returns will be higher, risk lower than in any one alone. I think the same thing is going to happen to the crypto asset ecosystem, starting with Bitcoin and Ether.